Today we're here with friend of the show and Clubhouse Gas Gear Guru, Craig Brooks. Buddy, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so we're talking about football helmets. Mm -hmm. Now, when it gets into any kind of sports equipment, football gear can get kind of complicated, especially for parents who've never played. But even for maybe dads who played football all their lives, they don't really understand how to make sure their kid's safe and, and fitted properly. Most youth league football players have their gear provided for them by the mm -hmm. department they play for. So when your kid comes home with a, with a helmet, how do you make sure they're in the right helmet? Well, the biggest thing on helmets or any football gear whatsoever is tight. You want everything to fit as tight as it can possibly fit. Um, you know, any any kind of play in the helmet whatsoever is what's what's going to cause concussions. If you've got shake in the helmet and you make contact with another player, the helmet is what's actually hurting your son as opposed to protecting them. So when a kid takes his helmet off and you see, like, red dots on his head where it was squeezing, that's a good thing? That's probably a good thing. You know, if he's coming back with headaches from it just being just so, so tight, you know, it, it can definitely be too tight, uh, but, you know, if some marks in the hair or something like that, it's not a bad thing at all. All right, well, why don't you show us what it is you can do to check when your kid, when the kid comes home and puts his helmet on, how can you as a parent well, check it? The first thing I would do is actually uh, make sure that the helmet fits properly uh, without jaw pads. Uh, the jaw pads, or often, oftentimes called ear pads, uh, are going to keep the helmet from the, the rocking side to side. I would probably take the jaw pads out of the helmet, uh, put the helmet on the child, and then I'd look for any shake forwards and backwards. Um, basically what you would want to do is if your child puts the helmet on is I would probably I would look to make sure that the helmet wrinkles up in his forehead as as he does his head up I would hold the face mask like this as his head comes up I'll make sure that you see some sort of wrinkles as as like the helmet's almost sticking to his head right. and then as he comes up slowly release the same going the other direction I would probably put the helmet on his on his head as his face comes downward, you probably want to see his eyebrows kind of pull up and then release. Now, if he puts it on and he goes up and all it does is wrinkle and never releases, or the other way around, it never, he can never go down and release out of the helmet, then it's probably too tight in the forehead. Okay. Um, most helmets are going to have some kind of sizing mechanisms. Uh, take Shut, for instance, this is the helmet we carry. Obviously, there's a ton of brands of helmets out there, uh, but we're very satisfied with this brand. They have a front sizer. Uh, this helmet, where you have a small, medium, and a large, and an extra large helmet, you actually have three sizes of front sizers. Okay. So this can be changed. The helmet comes standard with a with a seven eight, so basically like a medium, and you can make it either tight, bigger, or skinnier depending on the fit of the of the helmet. All right. What about the the air portion there, the inner tube looking thing? The air bladder in this particular helmet, this particular helmet is called the Youth Advantage. This helmet, you would want to have absolutely zero air in the helmet whatsoever. Fit the helmet to the child. Once it fits his head properly, then you would put air into the helmet only to fill the negative space. Okay. You would basically, if this, helm, if, if this helmet's fit right, you could basically knife through or razor blade through this bladder and he would still be safe. Okay. The air bladder, again, is just a, just a precautionary, more safety uh, and just, uh, you know, again, it's just filling the empty space, the negative space inside the helmet. All right, so once you've got it fit front to back, then how do you do it side to side? Front, once front to back's right, then you want to put the jaw pads in the helmet. Uh, most jaw pads are universal jaw pads. Uh, by that, I mean there's no lefts and rights. Uh, they should snap into the helmet pretty easily. Uh, normally three snaps, like so. And so once you get these on, this is actually what's going to make the helmet difficult to take on and off for a young child. The, the bad news is the, uh, the older people, the, the adults, the college kids, the high school kids, they've hit puberty, their jaws have formed, right. they've got these big fat jaws, so they can put really, really skinny jaw pads in their helmet and it still fits good. The bad news is the little guys are skinny in the face, so their heads are actually bigger than their jaws are. Right. So the jaw pads tend to be very, very thick putting it on, you're going to see tears oftentimes, you're going to see, I mean, it's really going to be a struggle, both take, putting on and taking off the helmet. But once you've got the helmet on with the jaw pads, basically want to look, and I don't even know if this is going to fit me. Oh. All right. You basically want to look, you want to hold the face mask in the front, let them turn their helmet side to side. If he turns his head to the right, back to the left, and you don't get any space between the jaw and the jaw pad, 
then it fits fine. Now, do you want to hold the face mask while they're turning their head? Hold the face mask, let them turn their head, and kind of turn into that pad. And as space shows, you probably want to go thicker than jaw pad. Again, most helmets come with one-inch jaw pads. Tend to, from a, at least say the 10 and under child, usually needs a thicker jaw pad than that. I tend to put the inch and a quarter size pad, uh, and that's, that's going to make it fit a lot better. All right. Talk to me about the differences in chin straps. You have two different types of chin straps here. All right. Uh, most helmets are going to come standard with a, uh, a cloth or leather chin strap. This is a leather chin strap. Um, offers, you know, basically the, the minimal protection. It's going to hold the helmet com from going up and down back and forth, anything like that. Um, but again, it, you're fairly exposed to any damage, right. I mean, any hand or elbow or anything. That, then there is also the hard cup style chin straps, which basically the same fit and functionality as far as holding the helmet onto the child's head. But what it does offer is just a little bit of padding. Right. And keeps, you know, any, any fist that comes in here or any, any elbow or even knee for that matter that comes flying up, keeps his chin protected. All right. Is there a difference in using the high snap or the low snap? There is a difference between that. Um, a lot of times, especially the older guys, it, it becomes a matter of personal preference. Um, a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of guys that are constantly messing with their chin strap, oftentimes it's easier for them to take it off on the two lower snaps. Uh, however, for the young guys, I do recommend to use the high snap chin strap. Uh, both these, these happen to be high. Uh, the proper way to fit this is the chin strap actually goes on the inside of the face mask. Oftentimes you'll see people coming out through the eye hole here right. and snapping it. It should go through the inside. And the upper snap will stay snapped. Once it's properly adjusted, the upper snap will stay snapped all the time. And the lower back snap will be the only one the child takes off. So he'll take this on and off, let the chin strap hang in front of his face when he takes the helmet on and or off. Basically, the reason I like this for the younger guys is, again, going back to the, the, the puberty conversation, the child's chin hasn't really formed yet. So oftentimes their chin doesn't actually even stick out past the bottom of the helmet. Right. The high chin strap tends to go up into the helmet better than the low chin strap does. Oftentimes the low chin strap pulls tight at the very edge of the helmet and doesn't go, get up in there. And so it, oftentimes it's, he has space between his chin and, his, and the chin strap. Because it has to go over the lip. Right, there. because it has to go over this lip where this is coming in here and around the back side. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I never thought about that. And if you stop me on football, then you've done something, Mr. Brooks. <laughs> All right, well, that's a lot of great information. Any questions, leave them for Craig, and we'll do everything we can do to get them answered. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. That's going to do it for us today, and we look forward to seeing you right back here next time for another great edition of Clubhouse Gas.